Alrighty, folks. So the whole chapter we have been doing systems of equations where we have two equations and we're trying to find an X and a Y that make those equations true. We learned that you could graph both lines and see where they cross, which is kind of tricky and sometimes hard to get the accurate answer. Um, and then we learned substitution, but it's not always easy to do substitution. If you had equations like you see here in example one, getting one of the X's or Y's to be alone would be tricky. There'd be division and a lot of fractions. So sometimes we need a different method. So this next method is going to be called the elimination method. And solving by elimination means exactly that. Just like graphing method meant we would graph them and substitution meant we were gonna substitute in a different part. Elimination means we are going to eliminate one of the variables. So there's a couple steps. First of all, we are going to add or subtract to eliminate a variable. That's going to um, basically mean that we are gonna be required um, to have an equal but opposite pair in order for them to cancel out or eliminate. So that would mean like maybe you're going to have a 2x and a negative 2x or a negative 5y and a positive 5y. So those will cancel out. Then secondly, um, we'll just have one equation with one variable. So we'll be able to solve. And at that point, we'll be able to find whichever one's left. So we'll either find x or y, just depending on the question. And then the third thing is we're gonna do what we've been doing all along with substitution is we're gonna go ahead and substitute that variable that we do know back in. So basically what we're gonna do is plug in the X or Y we know. And once we plug in the X or Y we know, we can do that to find the part we don't know. So if I know X, I'll be able to find Y. If I know Y, I'll be able to find X. So like all math, it's a lot easier to see it in action. So let's go ahead. So we're going to first start with step one, add or subtract. So I draw a big fat line under these two. And then I literally look here and say positive 2X, negative 2X. Those eliminate. Positive 3Y, positive 5, 5Y. That makes 8Y. 11 and three, 13, they're both positive, so I'm just adding them together and I get 24. So I've done step one, I added or subtracted these two um, equations. Now I'm gonna solve for the variable. So the only one I have is y. So to solve for y, I simply divide by eight. So now I know that y has a value of three, keeping in mind that I am getting an x, y pair for my solutions. So, now I do step three, and I'm gonna plug in the y that I know back into either one of these equations. And this part can get a little messy. I usually try to pick the equation that's going to be the easiest. And by looking at these, I like to avoid negatives. I'm gonna go ahead and use the top. So I have two x plus three y equals 11, but my y value is a three from right down here. So I'll have 2x plus 9 equals 11. Subtracting 9, I'm just doing the math, you know, that we learned from solving from the beginning of the year. 11 minus 9 is 2. And dividing by 2, I get the other part of my answer, which means if I went back and did this using substitution, I'd get 1, 3. If I did it using graphing, I'd get 1, 3. It's just that in this case, the elimination method is a lot easier. If I really wanted to make sure that I knew my answer was correct, I would go back to each problem, put a one in for the X and a three in for the Y, and then just check. Does two times one plus three times three really equal 11? Run it through my calculator, yep. Negative two times my X, I'm doing the second equation, plus five times my Y, does that equal 13? Run it through my calculator, yep. I know without question that this is my solution to that system. 
All right, let's try again. Now looking at this one, I have a positive 3y and a positive 3y. Those are not going to cancel out. So that's why up here it says you can add or subtract. When I go to subtract, what I really do is change the signs of the bottom row. So it's going to be a minus 5x and a minus 3y and a positive 2. I can change them all. I can't just change one. So now these eliminate because I have my equal but opposite pair, positive 3y, negative 3y, gonzo. So those are eliminated. Now you have to be careful. You have a positive 4 and a minus 5, so that leaves you with a negative x. Positive 2 and another positive 2 gives you a 4. We don't really want negative x, so I'm going to divide by negative 1 and find out that x has to be negative 4. So again, keeping in mind that this time I found the x first, I put in the first half of the work, excuse me, the first half of the answer. Now I need to go back to one of my original equations. So I'm gonna get rid of all my scribbly scratch and I need to put that negative four in and see what y equals. So for no particular reason, except that maybe it'll be easier, I'm putting it into the top. I have to put it in for x this time. Last time we found y, so we had to plug it in for y. This time we, are, we found the x first. So I make sure that I put it into the x spot. I do not know why, that's what I'm gonna be looking for. So negative 16 plus 3y equals 2. Now I just solve. And again, if you haven't been awesome at solving in the past, this is going to get to be a lot of work. So hopefully that's something that you've been getting more comfortable with as you practice throughout the year. So now I have y is 6. Okay. And again, if I want to make 100% sure that I'm right, I can plug in my negative 4 for x and my six for y in the top equation and see if it really equals two. So that'd be negative 16 plus 18, that really equals two. Bottom row, five times my x plus three times my y, does that really equal negative two? And that one would check out as well. You don't have to check them, but certainly if you're taking a test or quiz or just wanna see if you know what you're doing, it's a really easy way to be able to tell if you have the right answer or not. All right, a couple more opportunities to practice. Let's take a look at this one. The easiest partners to match up here will be the y's because you can see that they already will eliminate. I have a negative 3y and a positive 3y. Those will cancel out or eliminate. So everything else just combines. A positive 4x and a negative 2x makes 2x. A positive 5 and a negative 7 makes negative 2. So pretty straightforward to find that first part of my answer. So in this case, my x coordinate will be negative 1. Now I'm going to go back every single time. Just kind of get in the routine of what you do. Now I'm going to go back and pick one to plug it into. I'm picking the top. So I'm gonna have four and then I'm putting it in where the X was because I found the X first. This one does have some negatives, so I just wanna be careful with my work. So I have negative four minus three Y equals five. Adding four, I have negative three Y equals nine. And my last move divide by negative three, so Y equals negative three and I can plug those back in to check, but this is my solution. And I could have gotten it by graphing, I could have gotten it by substitution, but looking at the way the original problems were formatted, both of those other methods would have been a little tricky. All right, let's take a look at the grand finale problem. Nothing is going to eliminate right now. These are not equal and opposite, and these are not equal and opposite, but the seven X those are at least equal. So I'm gonna do what I did before, and I'm just gonna go through my problem and change the bottom to negative, which is like subtracting seven minus seven. Negative two minus a negative would turn that into a positive three Y. Five minus four. So I'm changing the signs in that bottom row. Now these eliminate. These, I have a negative two Y, plus 3y, which ends up being a positive 1y, 
positive five minus four ends up being one. So that's easy peasy. I end up already knowing that the y coordinate is one. Getting rid of my work that I did so I can see my original problems, I need to plug this in to either of the equations. I'll go ahead and do the top, but be careful because you found y first. So when you go to plug this one in, don't put it in for the x, make sure you put the one in for the y because the one is a y value. So then these become two. So seven X equals seven. And I end up getting one for my X as well. And you might feel like that's kind of strange and you'll, you know, you think, I don't know if that's right. Well, if you don't know if it's right, you can check it out. Go back, put a one in for X and a one in for Y. 7 minus 2, that checks out. Second equation, put a 1 in for x and a 1 in for y. 7 minus 3, 4. That checks out. So this process hopefully will help you. And I really actually love elimination. I think it's really slick. But you want the problems to be both in standard form like these are, where it's something x plus or minus something y equals the number. And then it's just a lot easier to do than graphing or substitution. So go ahead and give it a try. We're actually going to be practicing this um, again for another day, um, but taking it up a notch where we have to create our own matching pair in 7-4. So get your brain ready for that. Have a terrific day. Bye, guys.